So welcome to this uh, second uh, webinar um, of, of GeoSmart City. Um, those of you who participated to the previous one, uh, it was uh, related to the uh, energy scenario of the project. Today, following more or less the same uh, approach, we will show you another example that we made first of all to extend the inspire data specification and then providing an example of using this extended data model as target schema to perform the transformation and this time we will uh, deal with the other scenario of a geosmart city project which is the so-called underground scenario and in particular uh, we will talk about the utility and governmental services uh, data specification. Regarding the agenda, um, uh, first of all, I, like, I, I would like to say that this um, webinar, like the other one, will be recorded and the registration will be uh, available and posted on our um, social media and uh, in order to be uh, further exploited by those of you not able to attend but also for those of you attending this meeting and willing to uh, deepen some aspects the structure is the same of the other one uh, i will give you a short uh, introduction and then i will pass the word to uh, my colleague stefania who will explain in terms of target data model the extension of uh, inspire uh, utility and governmental services application schema made for the geosmer city underground scenario and then stefania together with fabio will show you example of data transformation with ale assuming uh, this target data model as uh, uh, this extended data model as target data model for uh, transformation then we will have time for questions and answers. But as in the previous, for the previous uh, case, uh, any kind of, uh, you are uh, strongly encouraged to post your um, questions on the chat uh, today, but then also uh, interacting with our social channels uh, after the webinar. In terms of uh, extension of uh, Inspire US application schema for Jasmer City underground scenario. Uh, we will talk about these uh, four points. The methodology for the production of the data model, the extension approach for uh, followed uh, starting from the Inspire data specification. In details, how we extended for the GeoSmart City with some insight into some specific aspects of the data model that we believe can be useful uh, for the participants. The philosophy and the approach followed in this case for, the, for our project was the same presented last time. So we started exactly as Inspire did for the production of its data specification. We started analyzing quite detailed use cases um, described at uh, quite uh, informal level, meaning uh, uh, with uh, basically with templates, uh, with Word, Microsoft Word templates by the different pilots. There are six pilots in the project dealing with underground scenario. And then starting from this uh, informal description of these uh, different use cases, we started arriving a uh, first uh, um, um, step of data requirements. So from each use case, we derived uh, data modeling requirement that we decided to collect using an Excel spreadsheet simply because this was a quite um, common uh, language uh, in order to um, deep uh, the interactions uh, with the pilots because uh, starting from the Excel file, we collected uh, several uh, feedback and then we were, we were able to build the first version of the so-called uh, common data model uh, still in Excel in order to uh, continue proactively 
the interaction with the pilots, with their participation. And then once we agreed on this uh, common data model uh, provided in, uh, in Excel uh, form, then we were able to move the step forward, the steps forward consisting in the uh, more close uh, formalization according uh, to what Inspire uh, used, meaning a common data model in UML using enterprise architect, and then deriving the uh, GML application schema in XSD to be uh, readily available for anyone willing to make the transformations using their own software tools. Very important was the um, revision loop uh, starting from the first release of the XSD because once the, after having participated into the initial phase of deriving the common data model in Excel, once the pilot started to um, work with their physical transformations, it started a revision loop in order to take into account further consideration in a very usual refinement approach. The, uh, what we, um, uh, the, the approach that we followed for the uh, extension of Inspire Data Specification are those contained in the Inspire generic conceptual model, in particular in its uh, Annex F, in which in the uh, red box you see which are the uh, more than uh, recommendations, I would say requirements, how to properly extend an Inspire data specification avoiding um, what is not allowed by Inspire itself. In terms of uh, continuing with the methodology, as you see in this slide, we started with the uh, core um, data model, which is binding by law, contained in the uh, Inspire uh, implementing rules, which at the same time contains also extended versions of the data model, uh, even though not contained in, in the implementing rules. And uh, indeed, you see very clearly stated uh, even in the Inspire website, that any extended Inspire data model should be used with caution because uh, it, it is a work still uh, in, in progress. So starting from the, um, from the um, uh, extended Inspire US data models, looking at the common data model that we derived uh, with the methodology explained before, collecting all the use cases and deriving the requirements for a common data model, enabling to encompass all these requirements. The first attempt was to create a GeoSmart City uh, extended data model, starting from one of the Inspire extended, simply adding the uh, additional attributes required by Geosmart City not contained in the uh, Inspire extended data model, but looking in more details, we disregarded this option because we um, experienced, as in the next slides will be shown, some inconsistency between some of the formalisms of the Inspire extended data models, and therefore our approach was to count, uh, to base our extension on the core and then adding uh, um, the uh, additional requirements, the additional elements uh, required by our pilots, taking into consideration what uh, could be uh, taken from the extension, but also uh, going a step beyond. So I, uh, from this um, uh, point onward, uh, I would like to pass the word to Stefania, which will go, which will enter into more details. So let me uh, pass the screen um, to her. Just a moment, please. Thank you, Giacomo. Welcome to everyone. There are some issues uh, with the Inspire US extended uh, data models. Some issues were common to both uh, green energy and underground scenario in the GeoSmart City project and are related to the fact that, uh, as uh, highlighted in the Spire website itself, the extended data models should be considered as draft. 
and uh, extended the schemas in the spiral draft schema repository do not entirely fit for purpose of the Geosmart City project. But in the case of the underground, um, an additional issue is present, an additional issue has been faced, uh, that is that in some cases uh, um, features uh, that uh, have been extended in the Inspire US extended data models are not aware of each other. And uh, an example, as an example, consider what is present in uh, this slide. Okay, in the dashed red box, you can see um, the sewer pipe feature type uh, in the core Inspire. Um, so, uh, sewer pipe is a, a generalization of a common utility network elements pipe. Um, but uh, uh, as we consider the extended the sewer pipe, uh, we can find two different feature types. One is the pipe extended feature type that extends pipe, adding uh, um, pipe coating type, pipe material type, and pipe shape type attributes. And uh, sewer pipe extended that uh, adds uh, other three attributes, average volume, max capacity, and sewer pipe type values. But, uh, as we can see from the slide, uh, sewer pipe extended um, inherits just sewer water type value and the pipe diameter and pressure um, attributes. And cannot see uh, pipe extended. So the attributes defined in the extended pipe are not seen by the sewer pipe extended because it narrates just sewer network, sewer pipe attributes and common utility network pipe uh, attributes. Uh, so, what is our solution um, in Geosmart City? Geosmart City extension so decides to extend the common utility network elements, uh, pipe and then sewer pipe adding just one feature type, uh, GSC sewer pipe extended, uh, which uh, uh, takes into consideration uh, two of the attributes uh, defined in the um, INSPIRE extended data models that are uh, useful for the Geosmart City uh, requirements, that is sewer pipe material type and uh, a sewer pipe type value, just one from uh, the pipe extended, the pipe material type, and one from the sewer pipe uh, extended, that is a sewer pipe type. Uh, code list management. Um, how did we uh, manage code list in uh, uh, Geosmart City project. Um, more details on this uh, topic can be found on the video tutorial on Inspire um, oh, <laughs> Epsilon uh, YouTube channel. Um, so uh, enjoy at your convenience if you like. Um, but here, just we say that uh, according to what's stated by the implementing rules uh, in the uh, Geosmart City uh, model, uh, we followed um, this uh, the, the, what is written in the slide. That is whether relevant Inspire code list values exist. Uh, they have been referenced, such in the case of a sewer water type value code list, um, for example, the value combined. Uh, and uh, uh, when needed value was not contained in the relevant Inspire uh, code list, um, the value and its definition uh, have been made available in a public registry that is a Geosmart City uh, register that uh, is um, still uh, ongoing, it's not available yet, but it will be, uh, such in the case, for example, of a code list not existing in the Inspire uh, uh, data model that is a source of data value and that we use in the Geosmart City uh, project. 
But what about the code lists defined in the Inspire extended data models, such as, for example, sewer pipe type value and pipe material type value uh, that uh, um, are referred by the two attributes we inherited from the Inspire extended model into the GeoSmart City extended data model. Uh, for such code list, uh, the values can be found in Annex G of uh, um, US data specification, but no relevant entry is present in the SPIRE code list registry. So our approach uh, is uh, the following, the code list, uh, both names and values have been reused by the GeoSmart City data model and will be made available in the GeoSmart City register. Uh, for example, uh, at the address uh, GeoSmart City uh, EU code list is your pipe type value, and this is a value that is uh, related to um, uh, a main line. Okay. So, summarizing it up, uh, the followed approach by the GeoSmart City extended data model extends uh, um, the relevant Inspire core application schema including, included in the implementing rules and when considered profitable, reuse the elements defined in the Inspire extended draft application schema and included all in the data specification in the GeoSmart City data model, both as regards uh, um, data types, feature types and of course code lists as uh, we have just seen. A recommendation, an important recommendation, as a, a GeoSmart City data model takes into account the requirement coming from six different pilots, uh, uh, this implies that some attributes might not be available for all the pilots, might not be needed by all the pilots, so uh, we need to make use of avoidable stereotype for many attributes. Our recommendation is to handle voidability with caution. Fill in all the attributes for which you have information to produce meaningful data sets. So, as we just say, um, we extend utility network profile in Inspire. Um, Inspire data model utility network profile is based on a node arc node structure and the network concept and the information is detailed on in uh, one common utility network elements application schema containing all the common elements shared among the different utility network type and six network specific application schema that is electricity, oil, gas, chemicals, sewer, telecommunication, thermal and water network. Um, so, GeoSmart City Underground Data Model extends the core utility network profiles of Inspire we have just seen and uh, accordingly information is detailed in one new common types application schema that contains all new common elements shared among the different utility network type. Uh, new means that no corresponding feature type or data type exists in the US core model. Uh, then we have six network specific extended application schema, so the uh, six uh, application schema of the uh, Inspire Underground Core have been extended and there is also one team specific extension of the base model activity complex uh, uh, feature type. Uh, the types defined in the base model activity complex according to what stated in D2.10 uh, are supposed to be extended in the related thematic area uh, data specification, uh, such as, for example, utility and governmental services. But uh, in our case, uh, Inspire Utility and Governmental Services data specification do not extend it, and so we do in the GeoSmart City uh, data model. Um, okay, here we can see the UML diagram of the feature type of the application schema and new common types and we can see the different uh, um, feature types. 
we have for the crowdsourcing feature types, um, mostly specifying which information is needed for crowdsourcing. First of all, of course, location information that can be um, given by means of uh, GPS, so um, point geometry, by means of coordinates, or whether uh, no GPS is available. Um, the reporter can just type in the address of the rupture. Uh, other information uh, is uh, insertion date, of course, which is the problem type the reporter is uh, uh, reporting about, uh, which is the problem status, that is if it's in charge, it is resolved or whatever, and uh, of course, uh, a reporter um, data as email, name, telephone number, and so on. In this case, for feature type crowdsourcing, also a constraint is given that this address or location uh, is needed. So uh, at least the coordinates or the address must be inserted by the reporter. Another important feature type is the underground works, uh, giving information about uh, the works uh, on the underground network. Um, such as the soil digs or municipal intervention and um, in this case of course uh, geometry is, uh, is uh, needed and or uh, in this case also the geometry as a point by means of coordinate can be given or the address number uh, or even a surface because geometry is of the type GM object and uh, other information needed uh, regarding the, the works themselves, such as the, uh, the start authorization date, the uh, day of the cut, so the cut time, uh, uh, when it's going to be finished, and so on. Um, another feature type is the project feature types related uh, with a project um, which affected somehow the network, the underground network, and the uh, information related are um, so the executor, the start date, the sub submitter, and the state, if it's completed or not, description and so on. And uh, um, in this case, uh, um, to avoid um, uh, to insert many time in the project information, uh, we um, added the feature type of project actions. That is, for example, uh, the, sa the same project can uh, start a sewer pipe, can stop another sewer pipe, or an appurtenant. So each uh, pipe references uh, an action and. Uh, for example, start or end or stop and so on, and this action is related to the project uh, so that, of course, is inserted just one time in the feature type of project. We have also defined the new data type, uh, uh, infrastructure origin, um, giving account of uh, giving information about the uh, older. Um, owner of the uh, network when this is uh, when this information is needed should the information is needed be needed uh, pipe dimension um, in this case for example we have uh, different pilots having a different uh, uh, way of uh, referencing uh, uh, dimension of the pipe some for example reference to the external height and width some other the internal and some other just the length and we uh, thought it was uh, um, important for a just to uh, leave uh, um, the possibility to use uh, uh, the dimension of the pipe uh, needed by means of a single data type. Then the source of data and the depth measure data type. Uh, source of data is uh, uh, the tool by, by which uh, the measures are uh, gained, for example, uh, GPS or uh, measures are, are derived from some models and so on 
and depth measure uh, re refers to the location of the pipe and uh, also the accuracy is given uh, giving information about the errors and here in the slide uh, we see the Excel uh, data model and uh, we find uh, of course this is the new common types this refers to the new common type, so we have the underground works, the project, project tax, uh, actions and crowdsourcing information and on the right you can see the mapping uh, we made <coughs> uh, towards uh, the pilot's uh, uh, data model attributes. Um, so the, the, uh, this system uh, slide showing the data type, the new data type defined, and the mapping for the pilot to give us this, this information. And here is the uh, sewer network extended data model, uh, just as an example of uh, the um, GeoSmart City Underground data model. Um, and here, for example, we can see how the new feature type are linked to the uh, extension. For example, here we see that a sewer pipe uh, as a project action and by means of this project action is linked to the project that uh, operate the actions on the pipe. Uh, same can be seen for um, appurtenance. And uh, also the underground works refer uh, to a sewer pipe or to a sewer appurtenance by means of this uh, um, relation. And here we can see the mapping table um, for the sewer pipe extended. In the red box are the attributes of the Inspire core data model for the pipe. In the yellow you can see the attributes we reuse from, for, from the, the Inspire extended data model and all the others are new ones introduced by GeoSmart City data model. Green ones are uh, um, referred to new version that is version 2.1 of the GeoSmart City data model. Okay, uh, now we have described the, the data model and uh, we are ready to go with the example of data transformation using HAIL software tool. Um, um, don't try to perform a transformation directly using HAIL, that, that's our recommendation. Uh, or of course any other software transformation tool uh, you like because uh, uh, you will get uh, for sure into trouble. So our suggestion is to follow a data transformation process made up of following steps. Step one, analysis of the data set and identification of the source data model. Uh, Sometimes a pre-processing phase is needed, such as, as in our case, and we will see it later. And step two, identification and analysis of the target data model. In our case, target data model is a GeoSmart City extended data model. And uh, we used uh, the enterprise architect tool to create the XSD from the UML we have just seen in this presentation. And uh, though we had to put our hands on XSD files to solve some minor issues related, for example, to the use of avoidable stereotype that is not correctly encoded during the enterprise architect tool export phase. And um, step three, updating and filling of the mapping table. This is a very important and crucial step because mapping table is a very useful tool to document the mapping process, process that is to identify correspondences between the elements of the source data model and target data model. Then uh, analysis and solution, hopefully, solution of matching problems. 
execution of transformation with the selected tool, in our case the HAIL transformation tool, and creation of transformed data, so creation of a GML dataset file. So, in our case, here is the source data. It is a shape file of um, um, sewer pipes and appurtenances. Um, it is just an example, a subset data. Uh, also because data um, are still being collected. And um, so the, the example is not exhaustive of all the data and data attributes. And um, this is uh, an example given by Flander Region Pilot. And um, a three shape file related to appurtenances and the nodes um, and the pipes have been, uh, uh, represent our source data. Data model as well as re has been represented is represented by this three shape file. Um, in the slide, we just see the attributes related uh, to the um, sewer pipe shape file. And uh, um, in our exercise, for reason of brevity, we use a sample of 16 uh, sewer pipe, and this is the shape file subset. Uh, the target data model, as we already say, is uh, the sewer network extended data model of the GeoSmart City project. And uh, in the end, we'll find um, a GML uh, uh, file containing our data transformed according to the um, XSD. Um, we have just specified that is the GSC uh, target data model. And uh, we will see in the end that we obtain the uh, valid GML file. So, um, as we already anticipated, uh, a pre-processing phase was needed. Uh, we had to reproject uh, the from Belgian uh, Lambert, Lambert 72 uh, coordinate reference system, which is not allowed by Inspire data specification, to EPSG 3035. Uh, we had to use uh, uh, a GIS tool, uh, though the uh, last version of Hayes allows uh, coordinate reference system transformation, uh, because uh, in um, this case, uh, uh, Belgian Lambert coordinate reference system is not uh, um, uh, allowed by HAIL, so we had to use a GIS tool. Uh, we have already said that uh, the transformation tool is the Humboldt Alignment Editor, that is an open source. The version used is 2.9.2. And uh, the generic workflow used to transform the data set according to selected target schema requirements that we are going to use uh, in our live demo is uh, the one you see in the slide, so import of target and source schemas, import of data, set of the mapping uh, transforming rules, export of transformed data, and validation of the transformed data set. So here we go with the uh, live demo uh, trans with tail. So here we go. First of all, we import source schemas. And we already say that we have three shape file. So uh, two related to appointments. Uh, here we go. Here's the other one. <laughs> and the sewer. Oh. oh, 
like I clicked on source data and not source schema, and that is. <laughs> was anticipating next step. Okay, sure. Go. Now, uh, though it's, it is not mandatory uh, to perform a transformation uh, mapping by means of veil, uh, it's important to load the source data because this way we allow um, HAIL online validation. That is, each mapping step has been, uh, is being validating uh, live by HAIL, so we have a feedback about the validity of what we are doing, of the mapping we are doing. So let's import source data. Uh, source data, here it is. Source file. Sample of opportunities. Finish. And source data sample of sewer pipe. Uh, in this example, we just consider one shape file of uh, nodes and opportunities. Then we have to load, of course, target schema. Um, in our case, uh, um, it is present from URL, of course. Uh, the, the, the schema is present on uh, the Epsilon Italia download uh, public area. Uh, AIL recognizes this is an XML schema, so we import it. OK. And here we go with our transformation. So first of all, first thing we have to do is to um, specify uh, in which uh, feature type our source data model has to be transformed. So this is, we want to transform our source data model in the sewer port and extended, a sewer uh, pipe extended by just smart city data model. And we can do this by means of the ray type function. Okay, we can see that we have 16 uh, instances in the source and 16 instances in uh, our target. So let's open it. Uh, as you can see, an online validation has been made by AIL, and AIL is telling us that there are some instance validation issues, and let's see which are these, these warnings. Okay, first of all, of course, cardinality warnings. Um, ID attribute is mandatory, so we have to fill this information, to fill in this information. Uh, the ID element in the sewer pipe extended feature type is uh, the GML, GML identifier attribute that uh, is defined in um, uh, GML uh, specification and uh, it, it must be a unique identifier uh, in, within the GML file and us to begin with the letter. In our case, we can link it to the um, to the STR number uh, element in our source data model. That is the number that is used by all user for identification of a sewer link in the VMM data model. And in this case, uh, uh, this is a uh, um, numerical type, and we cannot use it as is uh, for the ID because uh, uh, GML ID must begin with a letter. So we use uh, the function formatted string. Click next. And uh, add a letter. In, in this case, we choose to add uh, uh, sewer pipe uh, 
letter to letters identifying a sewer pipe and then uh, click on STR, STR. Uh, let's go back because this is not ID but is number. Okay, as we can see for example in the mapping table, <laughs> uh, this is the mapping table related to sewer pipe uh, extended and this is the mapping towards uh, um, a Belgian pilot. Uh, in this case, for example, we can see that uh, um, the, uh, our ID is a sewer pipe and then STR number. Uh, so, let's go back to Hale. So, the number, next. So, SP and then now let's click on STR number, finish. Okay. Uh, then we are going to fill the Inspire ID attribute, which is of type identifier. Identifier is a complex uh, data type formed by local ID, namespace, and version ID. Um, no hint is given about how the local ID uh, can be made, but can be uh, derived um, by data specification. But we find uh, it's a, a good practice, a best practice, to uh, um, repeat for the local ID the same attribute we, gi we gave to the GML ID, so that uh, also uniqueness of this identifier within the GML file can be achieved. Because the um, GML ID uniqueness is uh, um, tested by the uh, XSD application schema. So if we put in the Inspire ID identifier local ID the same value as the GML ID, we can be sure that uh, this uh, value is unique. So uh, we can also see this in the mapping table where Inspire ID has been mapped to the value SP, STR, and R. And R. Okay. Uh, so, again, formatted string. Next. As for the namespace, um, OGC specification says that uh, a namespace should be uh, made up of uh, uh, information related to the member states, the data provider and the product. So in this case we have no uh, relevant attribute in our source, so we assign the value. Uh, in this case is Belgium, DMM, and uh, SUA uh, network. Finish. Version ID in this case uh, is just uh, you assign version 1. And here we go. Okay. Um, if we go back to the instance validation problem, for example, we see that pipe diameter is missing and it is mandatory, so we have to fill in. So, uh, unit of measure, and that is a meter. Finish. In this case, no pipe diameter info is uh, uh, contained in our source dataset, so we can uh, assign the value unknown. Finish. Let's click again on the instance validation problems. See what pipe type. Okay. 
In our uh, source data mo model, we have information related to water and water types, your water type and um, sewer pipe type. This is the, map we are, the mapping we are going to uh, follow. So, in the first case, a sewer water type, that is type of water, uh, code list is uh, sewer water type and uh, is um, an inspire code list contained in the uh, inspire code list register. Um, so we go import code list from inspire registry. Okay. Utility and the network services. And this is the relevant code list. Okay. Now we find in our source data model the water attribute. Here it is. And the uh, sewer water pipe, uh, uh, water type, okay. We must re refer the code list as uh, an X link, so a classification is needed because in our water attribute just the value is contained and not the name of the code list. So, classification. Water, water href, next. Now, just uh, we find out source values. Target value, click, double click. Just select the sewer water type code list and choose the value. Okay. Finish. As for the inspire, inspire um, sewer pipe type, uh, sewer pipe type, here it is. The information is contained in the uh, Lighting, I guess, hope the pronunciation is right. Anyway, uh, lighting uh, attribute, okay. So, here it is. Again, a classification is needed because just in, in, the, in the source attribute we have just the value. So, next, source value. In this case, Let's go back and see which is the mapping. In this case, no relevant inspire code list exists, so um, we refer to GeoSmart City code list. Finish. Okay. Let's have a look. Just one instance validation. I left it uh, as a last but not least because it's uh, the most important uh, mapping we are going to see in this uh, uh, live demo. That is uh, the link. Um, here we go, let's see it into the feature type, here it is, the link, and uh, this uh, um, attribute is uh, a link to the set of link or link sequence that constitute the link set. So, in this case, 
uh, to understand this attribute, we have to uh, go back in the presentation and see Okay, here we go. And see that, for example, in the utility network profile type, let's consider the pipe feature type, we do not have any uh, geometry information because the pipe inherits uh, uh, has got two attributes, pipe diameter and the pressure, and uh, inherits utility delivery type uh, and warning type from utility link set, but no geometry information can be uh, derived from this. But if we go and see that a utility link set is generalizing the link set and uh, as uh, um, a relation that is linked to a generalized link that can be a um, network link, we see finally that geometry information can be achieved. Center line geometry, GM curve is the type. And utility link, which, is, which generalized the network link, inherits the geometry attribute. So, uh, let's go back to the HAIL transformation. Okay. From we have just to say that we hopefully understand that uh, a new feature type is needed. Um, that is the utility link feature type. Actually, the sewer pipe extended inherits the utility link feature type, but uh, it isn't. Uh, it doesn't show up automatically in Hail. So we have to go to the menu, edit menu and edit mapping relevant target types and click on utility. Uh, click on uh, the field and click in utility. And in this case we choose uh, schema for utility link. Okay. Here we go. We have our utility link, feature type, and we must uh, refer to the feature type utility link our sewer pipe data source. So our shape file of sewer pipes has to be linked to utility link by means of our type function. Here we go. So, uh, here again we have instance validation and uh, these are the fields, mandatory fields that, that we have to fill in. First of all, the GMLID, so the ID, again we perform a formatted string function, okay, um, the field is still this one. Okay, formatted the string. In this case, UL utility link is the string we antepon to uh, the number to obtain a valid GML ID. Okay, fictitious is, means that, uh, okay, here we go, 
dictations is this that can be for true or false and indicates if the center line geometry of the link uh, is a set line with no intermediate control points as uh, we can read all this in the definition uh, just at the bottom inhale and so a lot of fictitious and assign next in this case it's true okay then center line geometry let's go finally we can map the geometry information of our uh, sewer pipe shape file so geometry we have uh, um, center line geometry abstract curve line string and then rename here we go instance validation we have in our GML file is related of course to the link in the sewer pipe feature type that has to refer to the utility link so let's go back to the feature type sewer pipe go back to the link here it is the href and in this case href okay formatted string next in this case at, uh, as we are going to address a feature type we are giving a nix link reference so uh, we type in uh, uh, the hashtag that indicates this is a link and then type in the GML ID of the utility link as we just set, uh, set it in the previous steps with the utility link feature type so hashtag ul underscore str number finish oh finally we got the green check so uh, our GML is, uh, uh, is a valid one uh, so in this case we can uh, if we ask, uh, we can see for example in the uh, data perspective how the transformation has been made um, okay this it does not display well something is uh, is stuck uh, we can save the project okay let's see if saving it we can display it better um, Okay, data, transform data. No, <laughs> it does not display well. Um, but anyway, may, maybe we can uh, see all the same. I cannot open this uh, window. So in the utility link, we can see that uh, geometry has been mapped as a line string. Ah. It does not display. Um, let's go to the map view if we are. Maybe it's a better.
maybe here we are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, finally, is our transformed data set. Uh, sewer pipes. Okay. Um, okay, this is the the health project we used uh, for our test <laughs> and maybe we can see it here hopefully yes okay uh, in this case uh, finally uh, sewer pipe extended appears so we can see how the mm, sewer pipe ID has been mapped and also in the spire ID local ID and the namespace and the link that uh, refers to the utility link uh, uh, containing the geometry related to this uh, sewer pipe. And also sewer pipe uh, uh, type. Okay, here it is. And sewer water type. So, for, sorry for the inconvenience related to the visualization of the hail workbench, but uh, this is uh, all for the moment. And uh, so, we uh, question and answer time is coming. Thank you for watching, everyone. Okay, um, we have a question um, asking me if uh, the extending, extended XSD is available. Uh, publicity, yes it is. Um, in the, um, hopefully we, I can display it. If I, say, no, if I say that I want to import a new target schema, for example, and I, you can see here www epsilon Italia, and then uh, public download uh, epsilon Italia it, uh, epsilon Italia public GeoSmart City schemas. Uh, GSC US uh, 2.21 and then the name of the application scheme. Uh, by the way, I'd like to add that um, uh, as we made for the previous uh, uh, for the previous webinar, we will make uh, available all the material used. Uh, uh, in this uh, webinar together with the XSD and whatever you need that if you want to uh, make again the same uh, exercise. Uh, this will be uh, like in the other webinar, uh, a zip file or other material will be, will be made uh, available together with the link uh, to the registration of the webinar. Are there other um, questions? I know that this um, subject is a little bit more complex than uh, the one that we explained uh, last time for the buildings. At that time, the extension was a little bit more simple. In this case, uh, the um, multiple uh, application schemas involved uh, make the uh, situation a little bit uh, more complex. But you can see how for strictly adhering to the uh, recommendations and requirements about how to extend the uh, inspired data specification at the end UK you are able to map uh, all the uh, even complex uh, situations it's very interesting in this case to say that uh, in, a, in a, um, some pilots uh, required to extend the the core uh, inspire in order to uh, fulfill uh, national specifications uh, applicable to their countries. 
And uh, for this reason, for instance, the Italian pilots um, asked to, and we performed this extension in order to allow them to be, uh, to conform to the um, national data specifications, which are in the process to be uh, made publicly announced. Okay. And uh, um, I forgot to, uh, to um, let you see how a GML file can be uh, created uh, and with uh, the transformed data. Um, I don't know if I still have the video. Okay. So, uh, file, export, transformed data. In this case, feature collection. Then click next. Uh, target file, uh, let's test type, and validate it by means of XML validator. Uh, as I've uh, said, uh, also the, the possibility to convert CRS is given, but in this case we cannot use because we could not use because uh, um, Lambert, Lam, Lambert uh, CR, CRS is not included by HAIL, and um, so we had to use the GIS, so we have already a converted uh, file, and so we can click Finish and obtain a valid XML file. And uh, so let's see if uh, other uh, questions are there. Uh, when will code list uh, be available? Uh, uh, we still don't know. Uh, hopefully soon, <laughs> as soon as possible. Let's say so. Uh, And maybe we, um, um, okay, what we can say that we are using the registry, uh, ARENA registry uh, software, of course, and uh, hopefully they will be online soon. Um, what else? Let's see. Is it possible? To show, okay, you use a join function or merge. Yes, uh, it, it is possible. Um, in our case, for example, we can create a join between uh, nodes and the sewer pipes. Uh, in this case, we have to edit the uh, function, join. Okay, for example, we want to uh, map a join between uh, um, nodes and uh, pipes to the uh, Josmart City sewer pipe extended. Okay. We have to select the join order. And which is the uh, attribute that is common in this case is that, for example, let's choose uh, oh, sorry, uh, this is so.
And then click Finish. In this case, I don't do because otherwise I, maybe I get an error because I... Um, anyway, let's click Finish. No, no error. As anyway, of course, instance validation. Okay. Because you have to de re redefine for this join the information related to the ID and the link and so on. So, any other question? Okay, maybe we can uh, have a look at the GML just produced. US like let's open it. and validate with by means of oxygen software tool. Validation is in progress. So validation is in progress and uh, we may have a look at the structure of our GML file. You can see that a sewer pipe extended element has been created that uh, we have uh, uh, the GML ID identifying, for example, this sewer pipe, and we can see that the local ID has the same uh, value. In the meanwhile, the document is valid, <laughs> has appeared, and uh, we can see that this feature member, so this sewer pipe, is linked to the utility link by means of this attribute. The link attribute refers to uh, the utility link. So we can find, for example, the utility link. Uh, if you click, uh, and then click, okay, we can find the utility link referred to. So that sewer pipe is referred to this utility link this is the definition and this is the geometry associated with it. So you can see that the EPSG is 3035 and, uh, and what else. <laughs> so, so I think uh, this is all if you don't uh, and uh, is it possible? Okay, no other question. <laughs> No other questions are uh, on chat, so uh, thank you. Okay, thank you, Stefania, for also for uh, having uh, taken over these uh, uh, question and answers. As I anticipated before, um, hopefully today or at latest uh, tomorrow morning, uh, the participants uh, will uh, receive a link to the registration of the webinar together with the uh, link to download the, the material used uh, in show with this exercise and uh, we will post on our uh, um, social uh, media channels in order to give maximum um, dissemination to this event. I can anticipate that uh, the activity that we are going with AIL uh, will uh, continue quite intensively because so also in the frame of the Geosma City project, uh, we arranged with the uh, developers of ALE a special agreement to test specific plugins which are under um, experimental phase, enabling uh, the um, connection with uh, Oracle uh, 
uh, databases and hopefully this can be uh, the results of these uh, Mm, uh, trial can be subject uh, to another webinar in the in the coming weeks. Um, thank you all for your uh, uh, participation and see you next time. Bye bye. Bye.